Housing markets climbing nearly 5% in October. Experts are saying this will probably be the largest increase before the end of the year. So let's talk about it. And for help with that, let's bring in business and markets analyst and Newsmax contributor, Seth Denson. Seth, good morning. Hey, Christina. Have Merry belated Christmas. <laughs> Hope you had a great one. Merry belated Christmas. I know you probably had a great one with your beautiful wife there at we home. Did. But let's talk about this housing market because prices grew in October by 4.8%, though it's mostly being driven by cities like Detroit, San Diego, New York. The mortgage rates, they dropped earlier this month to as low as they had been in the spring. But do you think we'll see housing prices or mortgage rates lowering back to those 3% anytime soon? Uh, no. I mean, mortgage rates may be a little bit. Uh, we already are seeing them drop, Christina, in large part because they follow the bond market. And when Janet Yellen comes out and announces she's going to release one and a half trillion of new bonds, the bond market kind of does some funky stuff. So, yeah, it's it's dropping a little bit, uh, which is good for, for borrowers. The problem is the pricing will still remain high. Interestingly enough, these cities you mentioned, Detroit, San Diego, New York, those were also the cities that were decimated early on in this because people were trying to flee them. So what this is is a market correction. I'm not looking for a data point here. I'm looking for a trend. So I want to see data over a longer period of time. We'll see what happens when November numbers are released. But uh, I don't think this is here to stay. Likely prices will remain high because of supply and demand. I still don't think there's any hope for anyone under 40 to break it's into tough. the housing market for the it's first tough. time. But the stock market, doing pretty well. S&P 500, yeah. it climbed yesterday to over 4,774 points, well within striking distance of record, sitting at just over 20 points higher. Now, Seth, the market, along with the Dow and the NASDAQ composite, they've seen an eight-week winning streak. Is 2024 going to be a good year? Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's, such a, that's such a loaded question, Christine, and here's why. <laughs> Economists and, and, and analysts, myself included, have been waiting for the shoe to drop on this market, not really understanding the emotion behind what is keeping it propped up so much, right. uh, except for the fact that we keep pouring money into the market. Again, I'll mention it. what I said a second ago. Janet Yellen announcing $1.5 trillion of new money going to be printed and shoved into the market. What does that mean? That means that money's got to go somewhere. And for people that are sitting on the sidelines with cash, the market seems like a good place, especially when you couple that with the fact that Jerome Powell just last week was out saying, hey, guess what? We're going to lower interest rates potentially three times next year. That's causing the markets to bounce, and they will continue to bounce as long as this positive news and a lot of money being printed is out there. All right, let's talk something that's in a little bit less demand, electric vehicles. I mean, lawmakers are just trying to force these things on people. You see New Jersey, New York, I think something like 12 states is trying to make it so all new car sales by 2030 will be only EVs. We don't have the infrastructure for this. I mean, do we think that demand will start creeping up in 2024 for uh, uh, electric vehicles? Christine, you're using logic. <laughs> what, what logic shouldn't play into this, should it? No, here's the reality. It's not, the infrastructure isn't there, but yet it is getting shoved in. And interestingly enough, we did see an increase from 21 to 23. Uh, we saw an increase from 9% utilization of EVs to 16%. You would think that's a big jump, right? Here's the problem. Every car maker under the sun is now pumping EVs into the market. And so what's happening is supply and demand on the opposite side. Tons of supply, not as much demand. The price is coming down. Interestingly enough, cars expected, the EV cars expected to drop next year up to 30%. So maybe a deal. Maybe. I don't know. All I know is my mom has a part EV, part gas car. And every time we go park somewhere, she's like, it doesn't never even fit. So why would I even charge it? They don't even have my right uh, connector. Anyways, Costco, they might be planning to remove churros from its menu. <sighs> How do you feel about this? Say it ain't so. No, I know. no here's, here's the deal. I, 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 I enjoy a churro maybe once a year. And I go, okay, I remember why I only have this about once a year. It kind of tastes like cinnamon sugar cardboard. But that being said, it's kind of fun, especially when you get a little bit of ice cream. But Costco's at least replacing it, it sounds like, with cookies. I, I am the household cookie monster here in the Denson house, so I'll take the cookies. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's not even like anyone really wants a hot dog or a churro when they go into Costco, but you go in and you see it's like $1.99. You got to do it. Right? <laughs> you got to do it. The best deal in the market. Go for uh, it. Right? I know. It just makes you want it. Well, South Denson, I'm happy that you had a Merry Christmas. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, Christina.